Hey everybody, Kelly and Robbie Riggs. We're the counter mentors with a very special episode of our, Huge. our, our highly acclaimed award-winning uh, yes. overall millennia awards of podcasts. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we, we are going to talk about something special. Yep. Right there. Brand new book. And we are really excited to get in there where you can see it. Uh, they I came mean, in huge. a couple of weeks ago. We've been in the middle of book launch and tomorrow it goes live on Amazon and you'll be able to order it and get it delivered to your house from Amazon, which by the way, Amazon prime, it'll be there tomorrow so, or the next day. So that's really awesome. Listen, we're going to come back on the other side. We'll talk about it. Stay with me. This is counter mentors with Kelly and Robbie Riggs. Finally, a place where you can get both perspectives on challenges in the workplace from a boomer and a millennial. The counter mentor is the new leader. Join us as we show you how to blend the very best of both generations, young and old. This is Counter Mentors, and here are your hosts. Kelly and Robbie Riggs. That's right. The pop soldier. We're here. The counter mentors. I'm your boy at Robbie Riggs. Find me on Twitter. That is Kelly Riggs. See him on Twitter at Kelly Riggs. And find us at countermentors.com. Most importantly, pops, we're going to spend a whole podcast talking about the book. You set it up. You teased it. This is it. After about three years of work. Well, I mean, about wait, about, wait, wait, about, about 10 years of work on my part and basically nothing on your part. Listen, I, I, think, I think the whole book idea became a real idea uh, about 18 months ago. <laughs> you know, 20 months ago. Like after five years of hard labor. 10 years. 10 years. Yeah, we were finally <laughs> discovered after playing bars 300 nights a year. You know, we were finally- So I just want to make sure everybody understands. 18 months, so for me, working with the Pops, that felt like about 10 years. So I just, I want to just let everybody know that that's, that's the scale that I'm dealing with. Yeah, just kidding, Bob. Here, here's just the thing. kidding. Bob. Well, no, no, but here's the thing. Everybody knows that you say those kinds of things because you're projecting what is really true, but on the other side. So. <laughs> oh, it's like that. It's yeah. like a reverse thing, man. I yeah. gotta say, we are we are super excited. You know, the last pop, really the last two weeks. Hey, and by uh, the way, listen, listen, listen. I, you, you just if no, please don't tune us out. All right, you're like, oh, I thought you guys were gonna do something funny like you always do, and I thought you were gonna argue with each other like you always do, or you're gonna have a great guest. Look, this is gonna be a great show. You need to stick around because we're going to talk about the book, yes, but we're going to talk about some of the history behind the book, why, how we got here, why we yeah. argue a lot. You know, we're going to talk about right. good stuff, so stick around. That's right. No, it's, it's going to be great. And, you know, I think for like the last two weeks, I've been walking around with a permanent smile on my face because of this. <laughs> like, it's actually done. It's actually real. And, Pops, first and foremost, we can't, we can't do this podcast without – uh, thanking a couple people um, yep. uh, that, that, that made this happen. So, uh, yes, this is like the Academy Awards. You can play the music. I'm going to ignore you. I'm going to keep talking. Um, oh, so, my gosh. Number now, one, see, I just made a big pitch for listening to us, and now yeah. you're going to start boring yeah. you. All right. It's going to be like that. First and foremost, um, uh, we want to thank Allison Hankey, our esteemed editor uh, at Nicholas Brealey. Nicholas Brealey, as, as many of you know, they're a big publisher. They were actually acquired by Hachette, which is the largest publisher in the world. Uh, and Allison really – saw our vision, saw what, what our personality and, and committed to and agreed with the crazy idea of us bringing that personality into a book. Um, and as with any relationship with a publisher, we went back and forth, both sides going. It was everything from cover design to voice of the book. To, and she was all along the way supportive. She had our back. She wanted the best product. And, and Pops, I got to say, it, it really became an awesome, awesome product. Uh, and and we're, we first of all want to say thank you to Allison. Thank you. We know you're a listener. Thank you for all your hard work. Yeah. And by the way, because we called this episode uh, Counter Mentor Leadership uh, or another book about millennials, uh, a shameless plug. <laughs> so we are going to do a lot of shameless plugs. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I, listen, mm -hmm. I didn't write these things, but I, I would like to maybe share one or two with you just because it's amazing to me how insightful our, uh, our endorsers were, how, how really they... They yeah. understand uh, how this works, like like our, our friend Tom Kalopoulos, who was uh, your professor at uh, Boston University when you were getting your uh, totally worthless MBA, but you got that going for you. <laughs> hey, it wasn't worthless, though, because I met Tom. So well, that's that's true. Worth, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I really yeah, got to rethink yeah. that. I do. That's right. That's said, right. He said, and I quote, shamelessly funny and brilliantly written. And here's the thing. We didn't even have to pay him for that. We didn't pay him. We didn't no, pay him. He no, said and, that on and, his own. He said, just that's right. let the laughs get in the way of the many important leadership lessons for every generation. And listen, here's one of the things I want to tell you about the book. 
it, it is funny. I mean, it's got a lot of good stories. It's got a lot of insight. It is consumable, as uh, the Rob likes to say. Uh, That's short right. chapters, easy to read, but it is loaded with content. And we're getting a lot of great feedback, Robbie. We really are. Over the past uh, two and a half weeks, we've been full-blown book launch. We've had a lot of people reading it previewing it and uh, giving us feedback. This has really been pretty spectacular. So, you know, Pops, one of our favorite things, you and I, whether we see a movie or we're listening to an album, uh, you know, uh, we, we like to hear the story behind the song or the movie or whatever. And, you know, I'm glad you brought up Tom's review first because Tom was actually the first person that I pitched the book to, as you remember. Yep. Uh, I, I had, I was taking his strategy class at BU and about halfway through the semester, I, I built a good relationship with him and I walked up to him after class and said, hey man, I, I have a crazy idea for you. And well, well, I, 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 actually, to be fair, the first person you pitched the book to was me. And I said, no. So, well, that's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. No, it's too that, much work. I've written books and no, but that's true. Yeah. 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 Um, so I went up to Tom afterwards and he said, man, Robbie, this idea is great. There's nothing else. There's nothing like this out right now. Uh, if you could execute this, this would be huge. And he actually did us a big, big solid. He introduced us to who is now our literary agent, John Willig. Yes. And uh, John, again, like Allison, this book could not have come to life without him. He helped us through the creating a proposal, shopping John, it. John's kind publisher. of a big deal. You know what I'm He's saying? He's a big deal. He's a big, big deal. Big he kind of, he kind of like did the magic dust uh, potion thing and did one of these. And, and the next thing you know, yeah. we got a book deal. It's crazy. I, I know it's shocking. He's not a millennial to be honest, but um, oh, just cause you know, he's the man and is awesome. Yes. And amazing. Another, uh, yeah. another, yeah. yet another proud boomer who is very successful actually comes to work at eight o'clock probably works a full day doesn't stop at start hey, hold on our boy john lives in jersey he lives in jersey i don't know if it's a full day he, he works like i mean uh, yeah, i mean come on come on <laughs> but anyway big 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 shout out to him uh, we pops you know the, the pops as he loves to remind us over and over and over and over and over uh, he's written a book uh and he, oh, he trusts me he told me that it. He told me that actually read hundred thousand times. He told me that hundred thousand times. Uh, but 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 I don't think he and I understood really what it meant to write a book that got published. Um, and John really helped us through that process. As did Allison. So pops, I know for me the first two people uh, are Allison, our awesome editor, and John, our agent. Absolutely, and it, it it was such an amazing experience because there's a whole group of people there at Nicholas Haley, uh, Nicholas Braley Hachette. Uh, that that have done a ridiculous job for us. Uh, you know, we've yeah. we've we've got our own salesperson. We've got our own uh, pub, uh, public relations person. We've got two two or three of the the crazy design, and, design yeah. and copy editors yeah. and all yeah. those kinds of things. And yeah. uh, you and I weren't used to that. In fact, we we were a little no. bit surprised. We were we were a little overwhelmed to be honest. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was great. Well, right. And those people by name, Melissa, Juliana, Juliana. Michelle. Thank you to yes. all all of you for all the work that you've done. Um, I mean, M Michelle, especially a huge shout out. This book, the cover, the light, we've gotten a lot of great feedback about the layout uh, of, of the book and how the, the hats and everything. I mean, it's, it's hey, been by, really, by the way, really let's, cool. let's talk about the hats because yeah, I, I, look, I get, look at that. Like that yeah. is super cool. If you, yeah. you haven't seen the book yet. I, I get awesome people that, that ask me if the hat thing is like a shtick. And of course, you know, it's not, you moved to Boston. And uh, one of the first things I did was uh, go to Goren brothers and buy this hat, this one right here, uh, exactly because I don't have a lot of hair and it gets cold in Boston. And plus I think hats are kind of cool. And then, uh, so we started, we started talking about, you know, it being a part of an old guy thing. And then how do we represent the millennial guy thing? And, you start, what was all that nonsense about eco-friendly? That's right. Hey, it's, it's a ball cap. Have, okay. No, we've got to do the right thing. So, like socially conscious, eco-friendly, right? Made with the right materials, sustainably made. I mean, these are all words that are NBA words so the pops would understand. Um, but but that, that's that, that's okay. We're, we're wow. gonna, we'll just call wow. it a ball cap. Okay. We'll it's a, a Patriots hat for crying out loud. <laughs> oh, by the way, going back to their seventh straight AFC title game, by the way. Just saying. Go Spe Pats. Speaking of shameless plug. Oh my goodness. I love it. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So, so all, all, all the way around pops, this was, this, it was an incredible process. So uh, we kind of talked about interviewing each other on this and getting our perspective. So I want to ask you the first question. Okay. Go. What, what was, what was different? Now this is a layup, all right? So I'm just right. going to let you know, softball. How Good. was writing a book with someone as great and humble and insightful and brilliant as me? How was that different than having to write a book on your own? Uh, well, it was, it, it, it wow, real man, you know, you yeah, should be an attorney. Awful. They would call that a leading <laughs> question. Um, 
but uh, it was exhausting. It was overwhelming. It was, uh, you know, trying to trying to keep a uh, little snowflake happy along the way and, <laughs> and, 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 and help him not get his feelings hurt. I gave away more trophy. Actually, no, I didn't because as we know it in the book, it's right, it's right here on the inside flap. Uh, no participation trophies were awarded in the writing of this book. So I, he got no trophies for me. No, you know, it's, it is true. interesting. Writing a book with someone else is, is different. And, and it, to mm -hmm. me, it was different in a really good way because writing a, an entire book is a, a lot of work. As you and I found out, even writing half of it uh, was yeah. really a lot of work. But I, I think what I enjoyed is, um, you know, I would write and you, you would read and revise and you would write and I would read and revise. And pretty soon what, what started out kind of a part began to kind of mesh in the middle as we got the voice right and you got the ideas right. And we took all of my great ideas and added your millennial nonsense to it. It really carved up something, you know, that we're hoping will do well. I, I don't. I don't even know if I can give that a response uh, right now. But uh, no, you didn't hit on a couple was, of key listen, things. It was fun. We, I mean, I got to admit, it was fun. We it had a fun. good time with it. It was fun. You know, I need to hit on a couple of things you brought up. Because I think it's important. W one question I've asked a lot is, how did you do the voice thing? Because one thing that people love about this podcast, they love about us clients working with us, is that we do bring two unique perspectives. And pops, people on this pod know we don't always agree. So how did we bring that into the book? And that's where the hat icons came from. It was this yeah. idea that we wanted to write the book in one voice so it wasn't confusing or more importantly, that the pops didn't try to steal all the easy sections to write. That was the real reason we did it. Um, but the, you can't blame <laughs> me for trying. <laughs> that's right. Writing it in one voice really was cool because it was the coming together of our ideas. But, I mean, you'll see in the book as you read it, we, we, we make our opinions known as you know, individuals throughout. You know the what I just realized? I realized that you just admitted, recorded, this is recorded. I, you just admitted that I wrote all the hard sections. I want to thank you for that. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Oh, talk, about, talk about a lawyer. Wow. You that wrote was, the was, layup sections. You wrote the easy spread. stuff. Would you write the intro and the acknowledgments? And I think everything um, else... I I think you pretty much completely rewrote the acknowledgement. So I just the intro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, it, it was a ton of fun, but listen, let's talk a little bit about the book itself. We'll, we'll talk more and more shameless plugs from some of the people that endorse it. And by the way, some real powerhouse people were mm. kind enough. And I, I do mm -hmm. mean kind enough and generous enough to provide some, uh, some endorsements uh, for the book. One of those, our buddy Keenan, you know, he, he, he threw down a nice, really nice endorsement and we'll read that to you later. But the book itself, we broke up into four sections. It was our mm -hmm. intent along the way to make it story driven, to make it real and practical, make it easy to read and yet deliver serious home run power pack uh, type of content. And I think we did it. So we, we start off with these four sections, son. And, and that first section is just kind of rolling out the background and the, and the backstory, yeah. if you will, of what, what creates all this intergenerational nonsense. And, uh, the, I think maybe that was the, the easy part is to kind of set the table. Didn't you? Yeah. You know, it was important because it's all 142 characters or 208, whatever it is now. It, uh, everything you read about the generational conflict are all sound bites. I mean, none of them are actual, here's the research. Here's how we got here, which we, you and I believe is critically important. We talk about a lot on this pod. So we, we, not, we wanted to not only get into the, the details and the history of how we got to this point in the, the, the workplace, right, in human history, right. but we also wanted to unpack what are the other factors, the macroeconomic factors at play that create the crazy, hectic, four-generation workplace that we talk about all the time. So uh, it, that, that was a ton of fun for me to write just because – uh, really for both of us being kind of the history dorks that we are, it was fun to go back and see how things have been done in the past to see what's going on and how we've gotten to this point. But of the four, four sections, without a doubt, that was definitely the, <laughs> the easiest one to write. Yeah. And that's the real takeaway from this section is that for the first time in history, mm -hmm. the workplace is completely different and it's completely different because of technology and social media and a generation that grew up technology dependent and integrated mm -hmm. And, and so right. what, what you've got is a whole group of employees that come into the workplace for the first time have something to offer. And that has changed the dynamics of the workplace. As we like to say Huge. when we do our, our speaking engagements, you, you know, so many times the boomer, what we call the boss, the boomer old school supervisor, B-O-S-S, -S, the boss, you know, it's, hey, sit down, shut up, let me be the, I'm the boss, right. you do what you're told, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, pay your dues, do it the way we've always done it. And one of these days, maybe, maybe you'll get promoted to leadership. And, and millennials are saying, what are you, nuts? 
I mean, you, you, can't, your mind. Even, you can't even operate yeah. a cell phone, you know, you, yeah. can't, you don't even know how to use the apps in a smartphone. That's right. And, and so it creates this inequity. But what we learned is from a personal standpoint, you and I, you grew up in an entrepreneurial household and you got mm -hmm. a lot of coaching, training and development from your parents and from me on the business side. Mm -hmm. But there came a point in time where those conversations became became more balanced and not just one sided. That's and right. that's when we sort of began to see this whole idea of counter mentoring, mentoring from yeah. the other side of the equation. That's right. No, it's been huge. You talked about Keenan, right? Listen to this. This is Jim Keenan, CEO of a company called A Sales Guy Consulting. He wrote a great book called Not Taught. If you haven't read it, definitely check it out. He says the Riggs boys have written a brilliant and timely leadership book. Clearly, clearly he, he, he read my chapters. They've written a killer how-to perspective, humorous, engaging, and funny book with one purpose, to get everyone playing well in the sandbox. Even if you have never thought you would utter the words, is the book for you. So big, big thanks to Keenan. He, he was actually our first guest on the podcast, Pops. He was. He was the first outside guest that we had. First guest. To, I mean, I, that, was that the very first podcast that we ever Our did? Our very first pod. Yeah, and he was on it. So, uh, yeah, many thanks to the Keenan for doing that. And he, he's a great guy, very bright guy. He does a lot of work in sales and recruiting and those kinds of things. You'll need to go find him at asalesguy.com. But, you know, th these guys don't hand out those kind of accolades uh, for no reason. And that's why it really means a lot to us because oh, it, it, it means yep. that we really we really did fit it into a, a niche there that, that made a lot of sense to people. So, and, you know, when I first started doing what I'm doing 12 years ago, uh, I was getting calls of, hey, can you come in and help us manage millennials? Can you, can you give us some special tips on how to manage a millennial? Right. And, and, and right. I, just, I just laughed. You know what I mean? You know, yeah, I, I've got, a, I got some great tips. You need to learn how to become a better leader. And that, that's really what the second section is about. We, we, uh, you can tell a uh, millennial entitled this. It's entitled, the section is, leadership is freaking hard. So, and it is, it's, it's not hard. just, yeah, it's, it it's not it just is. hard for the old reasons, which have always been there and continue to be there, mm -hmm. you know, of everything mm -hmm. from performance management to hiring and recruiting to creating a culture and all those kinds of things. But now it's hard, even harder for a lot of other reasons. And Pops, this is key because we always hear people say, well, guys, breaking news, managing the younger generation is hard. It's always been hard. Yeah, but it's different now. There are all it these is. other things going on in the environment that make it harder than it's ever been before. So we want, we want to get into that in detail. You know, when we first outlined the book, we thought, well, maybe we would put that as part of the first section and just kind of not go as deep. And as we wrote it, we said, no, we have to unpack this. People need to understand the root of the problem before they can successfully implement the solution, which we unpack later in the book. So um, again, really, really fun to write, a lot of deep research. And you know, this is something, I don't remember who said it pops. Um, see if I can find it here really quickly, but, but how like well-researched the book was. I, I, I can't yeah, I, say this. Yeah, but, I'll, let you, I'll let you find it while I say this. Yeah. We wanna give a really big, big shout out to a gentleman, good friend of ours now, Kurt Steinhorst, who also has mm. his own uh, book that has just come out as well. And I've got it sitting right here. I might as well show it, just give him a nice little plug. Can I have your attention? And uh, th this book is amazing. Kurt is a distraction expert. And uh, going back several years when I first met him, he was one of the first uh, people that really gave me some insight into the ways in which the workplace has dramatically changed. Technology mm. has created so much distraction in the workplace absolutely ridiculous and it's gotten worse and worse and worse and there's more and more research and what we're learning now is that leadership is hard not for all of the other reasons as if those weren't enough but now it's hard because technology has created if nothing else a tremendous amount of distraction inside the workplace but it's also created problems with complexity consistent constant uh, overlapping change is a real real problem and of mm -hmm. course all that lends itself to the big problem that most leaders have and all of them will admit to having it. They don't have enough time. I, I just don't have enough time. So right. uh, they're, they're not good leaders many times some simply because they don't invest the time to be good leaders. No, you're, you're, you're exactly right. And, and it, it, it's, it's been so cool to see the reaction I, that, that what I was talking about, how, how much time and energy we spent researching it. Look, anybody who knows the pops well knows that there is no one more well-read and, and more, prepared for an argument or a point of view than that guy. And so it, this comes as no surprise to many of you, but uh, one of the vice presidents for the Colorado Rockies, James Kellogg said this, countermeasure leadership is motivational, thought-provoking, entertaining, and certainly challenging for all leaders. 
Although extensively researched, this book is an easy read on, quote, new leadership, using basic proven methods while adjusting to a new workforce that is incredibly, incredibly driven, motivated, and tech savvy. Big thanks uh, to Jim for, uh, for his um, uh, endorsement. Yeah. Pops, extensively researched. We did a ton of research for this book. <laughs> yeah, and you know what's really interesting? Lots of books have quotes in them, business quotes in them. And uh, we're, we're no different. We, we're fans of well-said things that, you know, really focus on very specific details. And so we started each chapter with a quote. Uh, word to the wise, if you're going to write a book. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, do it. because uh, <laughs> what we found out is that professional publishers want everything uh, to have a source. And we had to source every single one of these quotes. And find the original source. The original. And what we found out is some of the uh, quotes that are out there that you know and see all the time are actually sourced incorrectly because- It's not real. Oh my gosh, we had to go so deep to get into it. But but, uh, another friend of ours, a guy that I've known now for a while, I I had a a previous business podcast that I did a lot called Biz Locker Radio. And uh, we've had him uh, on our, uh, talk to him about our show as well. We actually, Mm -hmm. you know, it's interesting. We had an episode with this gentleman on and the technology went south and it never went live. And he's a technology guy, which is also funny. They're, yeah, which is really, so, so we, we got we to get him back. But uh, John Spence, one of the top 100 business thought leaders in America, uh, was kind enough not only to read the book, but uh, he has been effusive in his praise of it. Told me again just last week, he said, hey, I got, got the hardcover, reread it again. He said, man, you guys have really crushed it on this deal. Thank you, John, for that. He says, uh, quote, superb advice, actionable ideas, and fun to read. I will be strongly recommending this book to all of my clients and con- colleagues. Let me tell you something. When John Spence says that, my head just about fell off because this this guy's the real deal. One of the top 100 business thought leaders in America. Yeah, I mean, it's huge. And big, big thanks to John. Uh, again, we got to have him back on the podcast because that episode was incredible. Yeah, it was epic. <laughs> And we, and we didn't get it. Yeah. We didn't get All it. right. So, so moving, moving forward in the book, section three. So we, we kind of lay the foundation of how we got here. What are those, those big things happening in the workplace? And section three is the counter mentor leadership model. Now pops, a lot of people don't know this, but counter is actually an acronym through which we teach our leadership methodology. Um, and we go through each step of the way. Communicate. Yeah, and, 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 no, 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 we're not going to share our, that's called, a, that's, called a, that's called a tease. No, no, we're not going to share it here on this video. You want to know the methodology that is like super secret and changing companies across the country? Uh, 2695 right here. Just- All right, so we are going to, you know, I'm, I'm tired of the pop stiff army. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to give a book away. We're going to give a book what? away. We're yeah, going to give it away right now. All right, you're, you're listening to the podcast. Um, if you're on the train, if you're in the car, wait oh, or pull no. over. Send us a book or send us an email, K Kelly R Robbie, K-R, K-R at countermentors.com. Send us an email and say, Robbie, I want a new book. I want it now. I want it for free. Okay, send this, me that email. This, I'll send you one. This is coming out of your personal inventory. We don't give hey, away things here. Make sure, here. make sure you give me your, uh, your home address so I can mail you a book. We're giving one away. I don't care what you say. We're giving one away. Wow. Wow. If you're okay, not going well, hey. to let me spill it. All right. You might as well go ahead and spill the methodology now. I mean, what the heck? You're no, giving I'm not free book. No, that's, we call that a tease in the business. Yeah, okay. we're, we're not getting to it. <laughs> in the business. Listen, <laughs> not, like the, the business business media mogul here. This is in the business, you know. <laughs> hey, right, hang on, right. network. Yeah. What? Uh, okay, I'm with you. All right. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, Pops, two, uh, one other key, key person we need to thank, um, Alyssa Connell. Alyssa uh, has done work with us in the past and other things, but she was our primary editor. And oh my gosh. I, and, she, and, and sorcerer. And sorcerer. So <laughs> I mean, she, she found some of this stuff. Huge, song. huge thanks to Alyssa. I, I, again, you have no idea how much we appreciate you. <laughs> oh, yeah. She... Uh, one of my favorites, she's a PhD in English, in English from Boston College, wicked smart, uh, and we really appreciate all her help uh, in, in the book. <laughs> oh, it was great stuff. Well, listen, we do. We roll out a, uh, we actually roll out the methodology that we use with clients is many, many years in development. Uh, and, and, and when people say, hey, can you teach us how to deal with the challenges and the problems of a four generation workplace, the challenges of leadership associated with technology and social media and intergenerational conflict, can you help us with that? This is the way we do it. And we outline it in the book and give you a lot of, lot of details. So you can find that in great detail. And to go back to what I was saying, I was giving a hard time, but yeah, I'll give you a sense of what it is. Communication is a big deal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you, you interrupt me 
and, and, and completely cut off my train of thought, then you're going to steal my thunder? Hey, 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 a little respect for the older oh part of our duo gosh. here. Classic okay. boomer. Uh, classic cla- boomer. Classic, classic boomer move. All right, section <sighs> four. Section four is the counter mentor uh, leadership solution. And it's, uh, mm. it's the counter model actually in action. And we right. talk about some very specific things. Robbie, primarily one of the key things is we talk about effective workplace coaching and how you really take oh. people from potential to performance real no it, it, it's it's huge and i think we talk a lot about that magical thing all leaders want ownership right engagement we talk about how to get there with coaching um again very very detailed the tools that we recommend um it's it's all in here i mean you, you walk away from this and multiple people in the reviews talks about the practical advice i mean you don't walk away from this having some facts or, or some theory. I mean, you walk right. away from reading this book, not only Actual being entertained, ideas, right? but with actual things you can do. We talk a lot about coaching and then uh, we talk a lot about the, the idea of creating a sense of purpose and, and motivating your people. And then we end it pops with one of the hardest things for everyone. And that's reading this book is easy. Changing your behavior is tough. It's yeah, really tough. Actually going back to the workplace the next day and beginning to do some things differently. I I will tell you now, uh, to get the most out of the book, you're gonna wanna read it, then you're gonna wanna read it and highlight it and make notes, and then you're gonna wanna reread it. And then you're- Well, they'll actually probably wanna buy another copy before they read it again, because it's gonna be lots- I think copies for the entire office is entirely appropriate. And uh, Uh, bulk orders are available, by the way. Bulk orders (laughs) are available. There's no question about it. Lots of shameless plugs. Hey, no question. Some of the people that uh, really contributed to the book in big ways are are people that you and I have great respect for. Uh, I think of Nate Regeer, whom we had on uh, one of our podcasts, Conflict Mm -hmm. Without Casualties. Fantastic interview. Great book called Conflict Without Casualties. Yeah. Randy Conley. Randy Conley with Ken Blanchard Companies. He's a trust practice manager there. Uh, really, Rand, really, really good stuff. Really, really good stuff. David Burkus, a buddy of ours, Burkus, yes. lives right here in my hometown of <laughs> Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's a ORU business professor, TED, TED Talk speaker, and a big time author. He's got a brand new book coming out called A Friend of a Friend of a Friend of a Friend. It just goes on ad nauseum. But I have previewed that book. And it is killer. It's about networking. It's about how you build a productive network. And a lot of things that aren't readily apparent. And some of the That's things right. are actually completely counterintuitive. Yeah. Burke, find David Burkus. You, you know, I, I think of some other guys. Uh, uh, David Brock, by the way. Uh, David Brock yeah. is, is yeah. a friend of mine. Uh, mostly... Uh, through internet email exchange, he's been on my my previous podcast and those kind of things. But brilliant guy, and uh, some some of the materials that uh, yeah. That- we also have uh, we talked about our interviews from the podcast pops with Kurt Steinhorser in here, Keenan's in here. Uh, I mean, we got so much great stuff. And, and plus, it- plus the great and and listen, all right, son, I need you to plug your ears. I don't want you to hear this. There'll be no living with you. But some of the great interviews that Robbie did with some really key people that he's. Uh, created a network with some of these people in, in, in real schools. stories, this is real, real, life. real stories of millennials and dealing with some of the challenges of, of working with boomers. Uh, and, and listen, boomers, you've got all of this talent out there that, that, that is potentially a part of your workplace. If you don't adapt, if you don't begin to understand how to use this powerhouse talent and integrate them into a powerhouse culture, you're going to lose. You're going to be irrelevant soon. I mean, you, yeah. you think I'm overblowing that. I, we can just talk about the data. Yeah, the data I mean, big, big, big thanks to Anna, to Lizzie, to Ryan. And, of course, the one boomer I interviewed, a, a former client, a good friend of mine, Eric Dorn, big, big, big uh, shout-out to him as well uh, for letting us tell his story in the book and how he's <laughs> adapted as a leader. Which, by the way, this, this is worthy of this podcast. Eric Dorn, great guy, CIO of uh, Fortune 5. Also CAO now. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, so, taking on even more. So, so he, he's a big deal. And uh, when Robbie first started working with him, uh, the, his company was a client of Robbie's consulting firm at the time. And the first thing he wanted to know was, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was too young and energetic. That, oh, that's for sure. Oh, he yeah. thought you were a caricature like, oh, <laughs> my gosh, I'm, I'm going to get someone to have to buy you a trophy every other day. But you guys, uh, you earned his respect. And to his credit, he gave you the opportunity to do that. That's right. And uh, he's become a fan of, uh, of counter mentors and a uh, great guy. Absolutely wonderful guy. We appreciate all the, all the kind of. Yeah. And, and, and you know, pops, I know we're, uh, we're got to bring this pod to a close, but I think it's also worth talking about and thanking 
all the people we've worked with over the course of the last, I know for you it's like 87 years, but for me, the last decade, uh, just thank you to all of you. We, 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 we've taken, like any good author or any good learners, um, we have taken uh, uh, pieces of what you've, we, we've, we've watched you do or you've said or you've taught us, and all of that has been woven into the book. And um, I, I, I just want to thank everyone that I've worked with over the years because I've learned so much from each of them, and it's all in here. That, that, it's, hey, it's all came together. Counter mentor leadership. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. If you have any interest in leadership or generational conflict, or you just want to read something that's uh, that's fun to read, I, I think you're going to enjoy it. And of course, I'm a little bit biased, but uh, Millennial Son did a really, really nice <laughs> hey, job. I was, I, I was going to say, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, for everyone out there that listens to the show, you know that I beat the crap out of the pops every week. All right, well, I, I do. It's, it, it's not he's fair. He's a legend in his own mind. But I've got to tell you, working with you, Pop, and and writing this together, I mean, it was absolutely awesome. And, and I think you and I both grew so much through this. And, and I know for me, watching you, your leadership, but also your humility and, and how you interacted with me as someone junior to you and listening to a counter approach. I know every week we get on here and I yell and scream at you, but uh, – Look, dude, in, in a rare, in a rare moment of uh, clarity. <laughs> Run the tape. Run you. the tape. I just want to thank you for your patience and uh, you being part of it. Well, it, as you, you, this is awesome. I appreciate that. And as you have so effectively pointed out, I'm the one that raised you, so it really is my fault. <laughs> so I, I do want to take that and acknowledge that that is true. The only reason you're awesome is because of actually your mother. But that goes without saying. So, anyway, <laughs> hey, the music says we got to get out. Listen, you can find this book. At Amazon, and uh, I'll give you a really short way to get there, C-M-T-R slash co, C-O dot, or a slash, rather, A-M book. C-M-T-R dot co slash A-M book. Go buy one. Tell us what you think about it. K-R at countermentors.com. If you haven't sent us a message already, you should, because we're giving away a free book. We'll see you next time. Be good. Thanks for tuning into Counter Mentors with Kelly and Robbie Riggs. For more information about the show, to listen to past shows, or to learn more about how Kelly and Robbie teach companies the counter mentoring process, visit countermentors.com. The Counter Mentors Show is presented by One on One Media, Incorporated. All rights reserved. Opinions expressed by guests on the show may not be the opinions of One on One Media or the host of the Counter Mentors Show.